What's up everybody, thanks for tuning in again, and today we're going to be looking at jetting one of these PWK carbs for your motorized bike. Also, we're going to be going over the throttle cable setup for one of these guys here. So, after watching this video, your PWK carb is going to be running phenomenal. So, the first thing that I want to cover is adjusting your throttle cable to make this thing work. I'll see a lot of builds where they'll freshly install this carburetor and they'll fire it up and the bike's idling too high or it's running at a very high RPM. And the main reason for this is because the throttle cable, when stock, is a little bit too short. And you may be asking, why is this? Well, the reason for it is on a standard NT style carburetor or an HP carburetor, the throttle slide doesn't have to move as far, opposed to one of these guys where it has a much longer pull. So as you can see on my throttle housing, you may notice that that little metal elbow is screwed in all the way as far as it can go. You want to do the same for the adjuster as well. While editing, I noticed that I forgot to mention actually that the little nut that goes on that adjuster, um, you need to remove that in order for it to screw in the whole entire way. Then coming back down to the carburetor, you want to make sure that this adjuster is turned in all the way also. So once you do those few easy things, you're going to notice that this carburetor is going to idle a lot lower, and you may notice that it's running quite rich, and here's the reason why. For those of you that don't know, on a two-stroke motor, running rich is when you see an excess amount of blue smoke coming out of the back of the tailpipe, and basically when you get these carburetors, guys, I recommend ch checking the jetting before you even install it. On my first carburetor, on the Harley-Davidson, that has an OKO also. And what I noticed is that had a 115 jet in it, but this one here, guys, came with a 105. So, uh, and that was in between two carburetors. Like, that was only two of them bought. So, I recommend taking the jets out, making sure they're not too lean and not too excessively rich. Um, if you're wondering what jet that I'm running in this current motor, I'm running a 105 main and a 38 pilot. And that seems to work pretty good with my setup. Also, your intake plays a big part in how this carburetor runs. You want to make sure that if you use this G2 Reed style, that your welds are strong and have no leaks. You want to make sure that this intake boot that you installed, the hose clamps are tight and there's no air leaks. Air leaks can really affect the tuning of this carburetor, so make sure that all of those are gone. Before we start talking about jetting, I just want to clarify the differences of, let's say, a stock carb, which most of you guys are going to be running, and one of these performance carburetors. Um, if you tear down one of your NT carburetors, the first thing that you're going to notice is you're going to have this little brass piece sticking up. Now, I did many videos on this carb, so I encourage you to check them out if you're not familiar, but it only has a singular jet, opposed to this carburetor, where it has not only a main jet, but it also has a pilot circuit. So I know a lot of you want to know what jets I recommend, and here's my answer. If you look down here at the table, you can see I have a number 115 main and a 35 pilot. Those are the two jets that I ran in my Harley Davidson before I started tuning it, and it did run slightly rich, I will admit, but once I down jetted to the 100, and the 38 pilot, I actually had to go up on the pilot because basically what happened was when I was adjusting my needle clip, it kind of made the bike run a little bit too lean. So I had to adjust my air fuel screw and my needle clip to counteract that along with the uh, pilot jet. So what I'm trying to say here is everything's an overlap, right? So what I recommend doing is start with your main jet, okay? See right here, that little main jet? Tune that first. It may be a little bit rough on the way up to that RPM, but once you get your main jet figured out, then I will move on to your needle clip, and I'll show you guys that here in a second. So taking a look at the carburetor needle, you'll notice that it's actually very similar to one that came with the NT, but if you look here, you'll notice it has five needle setting clips um, for it to sit on. So what you want to do is I recommend running it either in the middle setting or the one slightly below. And Basically, if you go towards that point down there, then it's going to make the bike run richer. And if you go towards the top, it's going to make it run slightly leaner. This will occur from quarter throttle all the way up to three quarters throttle. So another question I get about this carb is when people buy it, this comes in the box, right? These are three little lines here that connect to the carb. I don't run them on my setup. Um, I have one on the Harley 
And I honestly did it because I just wanted to have it so that when I drain the fuel, it's a little bit easier. But that's all it's really for. I mean, you got the little port here at the bottom of the fuel bowl, and you'll just connect it to there. And on a dirt bike, then you would zip tie it to your frame and things like that. You don't really need to do them on the motorized bikes, but in case you're running for like a, a GY6 or a um, dirt bike engine, you would connect it here, you would connect one here, and then you would connect one on your bowl and then you run them down. But on a motorized bike, to answer your guys' question, you don't need to run these. I've been running it without them and it's been great. All right, so I know a lot of you want to know how to install the throttle slide on this carb because on a flat slide carburetor it can be a little bit of a pain sometimes so I'm just going to show you the process. So first what you want to do is when you're actually, I wanted to mention this also, um, to get more throttle cable travel like for it to idle properly what you can do is you can remove that little nut that sits underneath this barrel here and that will allow the cable to sit down lower but we're going to slide that on to our cable here hold it with your thumb, get the carburetor spring, okay, thread that on, and it has a lot of preload on it, so be careful. You don't want it to fly out at you. You're going to take your little plastic piece here. See, guys? You want to make sure that the little end that's smaller, see how it has a end that's a little bit smaller? You want to make sure that goes towards the spring. So you're going to put that on there. Then you're gonna take your um, throttle slide and you're gonna make sure that the rounded end matches up with the rounded end on the slide. You're going to insert it. See if you can get it on the first try here. Get it in the slot, let the spring go, and just like that, the slide is now installed. Let's put it back in the carburetor and wrap up the video. So guys, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give me a like and if you have any questions or concerns, comment that down below. And stick around because in the next video, we're actually going to be taking this bike behind me for a nice long ride. Um, I'm still in break-in, so I'm not going to hit full throttle too much. But hopefully this time we don't accidentally damage the motor. So, um, But once we get it broken in, I'm going to go from the 20 to 1 gas mix to the 32 to 1 gas mix with full synthetic oil. On the YD100s, they really like that full synthetic oil, so we're not going to be sparing any expense there. But that is going to be the end of the video, so I'll see you guys in the next one.